Welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. The latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. And now, a Christmas message from Archbishop Listecki. The human heart longs to hear three simple words, I love you. Christmas is God the Father's personal valentine. St. Paul tells us, if I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I'm a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. Without love, we are empty. We were created in love. In that image, he created us. And even when we turned away from God and denied the dignity he gave us, he still sought us out like lost sheep to bring us home. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. Shepherds and kings were invited by heavenly bodies to a place of obscurity to view a child who would fulfill what the prophet declared that God is with us. And because of his son, Jesus, we celebrate Christmas. For with him, we are never alone. We are forever loved. This is the great mystery, which we should never take for granted. God who is love chose to be one with us. This is why we always have a Merry Christmas, because God says he loves you. Good morning and welcome. Let's say hello to the host of Living Our Faith, His Excellency, Archbishop Jerome Listecki. Good morning. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. Tomorrow we've got Midnight Mass at the at the cathedral, which is always uh, it's great. Father Jeff Haynes reestablished that uh, tradition. It's broadcast on the um, the TV. And I would say to our listeners, even if you are going to Midnight Mass, program your VCRs for uh, for that so that we get the the ratings. We want to make sure we beat the Pope yes, on do. that one, right? Sure. And if you cannot be there and you cannot watch it on TV to boost those ratings, then make sure you listen to it on Relevant Radio because we will also broadcast that. We've got two special guests here today because they're, I think they're geeks or they're going to talk about geeks because the title of the show is Gigs, Geeks, and God. And we'd like to welcome Dave Baudry. Dave is a fellow parishioner of mine up at St. Agnes mm-hmm. Parish in Butler. And we also welcome Mark Peekner from Our Lady of Lords. And gentlemen, before we talk about Gigs, Geeks, and God... We'd like to find out a little bit more about the two of you and your family life and your, your your faith life. So, Dave, since I know you, why don't we start with you and and go ahead. Give us the, the Dave Baudry family story. And Sure. I'm uh, Dave Woodry, Director of Christian Formation at St. Agnes and Butler. And uh, it's been a wonder being there with all the wonderful opportunities I have. Um, I've been married 22 years. I have two children. Uh, one that's uh, 10 and the other that's 13. And the greatest uh, fear I have right now is moving into high school. And Michaela, who's 13 <laughs> right now, and we have a lot of choices to make. But it's exciting because one of the high schools that we're looking at is Pius High School. Wonderful to see what they have to offer. And my younger daughter, Ellie, is uh, is 10 and fifth grade. And she's also one that's interested in science and technology. So it's wonderful to have them in my life. And, you know, Dave, uh, a public... Um that a gratitude to Dave because Dave has been on our Archdiocesan Pastoral Council, yes. um, which has been a, a significant. When we talk about the Synod, we talk about the various events, really uh, many of that has been generated out of the good work of the Archdiocesan Pastoral Council that comes together representing all those parishes. Well, thank you for that, Dave. And Mark, you're the Director of Communications and Technology Integration at Our Lady of Lords, and you've been a lifelong Catholic and lifelong member of Our Lady of Lords since you've been baptized there. Born and raised and baptized and, st- and now working at the same church. Now working That's at the same amazing. church. That's amazing. That's great. It, it is, it's a wonderful parish, and it's just been something that has, um, it, it has stuck with me my entire life is the community there. So I am, I've been married for uh, 13 and a half years. We have one daughter who is seven, and uh, um, a little over a month ago, she did celebrate her first reconciliation, so that was, um, that was a lot of fun. About 15 years ago, I went home to the area where I grew up on on a business trip. And Mm -hmm. I thought, well, since I have some extra time, I'll stop at the church. And I stopped at the church, but the church wasn't there. And I had to drive a block over, and the new church was there. And the church that I grew up in, uh, in the suburbs of Chicago, was built in the early 1900s. When I hear the story about this church that you were baptized in, that you're now 
parishioner at with your family and you actually work there. That, to me, it's like, oh, that would be really cool. And what was your motivation to, be, uh, granted to, to serve, but what was the motivation as a parishioner to go to work, to actually go to work at the church? Where did you work before? Well, for a time, I did work at the, uh, the Time Out Youth Center. So mm-hmm. I was there for about eight years do, uh, directing retreats. During my time there, and especially within my last year, my, my daughter was born in uh, my last year there. What happened was is just it became too much of a time commitment away from the away from the family sure. to, to to do that. It was a wonderful experience, but just life changed. And during my my last year there, what I experienced was just really looking around at the teens and how they were interacting, especially with technology, you know, with their with phones and and with everything else. Um, I was starting to see that there was a a need to really learn how to integrate technology into faith formation rather than trying to necessarily put it off to the side. And so when I left Time Out, what I started to do was actually become an independent consultant for parishes to help kind of come up with a plan. How do we integrate technology? And after doing that for a couple of years, Lourdes came up with the job that I currently have, you know, being there doing this and really taking communications within a parish up to a, another level, but really centralizing everything that a parish needs to do as far as communicating what's going on between mm-hmm. the traditional forms and now also the digital forms that, you know, involve websites and social media and, you know, digital signs and, and, and whatnot to just be able to put all that stuff out there and really make it flow together in, in, in a way that we make sure that the word gets out. And we have definitely seen a, a success level that we have never seen before as far as just people being able to, you know, people participating in retreats where before it was always kind of a struggle to get, we would have a men's retreat and a women's retreat and trying to get people to, you know, to fill it. There was, you, you had to work a little bit. Now we're turning people away because there's just no more space. So based upon what you just told me, you are definitely, you, you resemble the remark geeks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the, a techie kind of guy. <laughs> now, and even, be- even before computers, I was definitely a geek. <laughs> and Dave, I, I, we talked about your background, and I know that uh, your involvement with uh, the parish staff at St. Agnes and the Archbishop mentioned your commitment to the Pastoral Council here for the Archdiocese, but what, what were some of the areas of service prior to St. Agnes uh, that you served? There were several areas. Uh, be- before I came to St. Agnes, I was at St. Martin of Tours and doing a lot of social justice uh, areas and mission uh, trips and different things like that. Um, when I grew up, I had a went to Moorhead State on a wrestling scholarship, and after the second year in uh, Minnesota, I ended up coming back and taking care of my grandfather who had cancer. And after that, instead of going back to school, my life had changed. And instead of moving into going back into college, I ended up doing mission work, and that was a big part of my life, which uh, is uh, really ironic because at St. Agnes now we have two mission trips a year, and it's wonderful. It's a life-changing event for a lot of the teens that we have, and looking forward to them experiencing it. And I, uh, mission trips were very important. Also, social justice, the aspect of helping out. Uh, right now we do the Agape Meal Program along with um, the, the Crop Walk and several other social justice activities. Our young people really enjoy the experiential times uh, and kind of relating to life versus sitting in the classroom all the time. And I think no matter what age you are, when you take a mission trip like that or you go on pilgrimage, these types of events and excursions leave indelible marks on your brain, on your memory, be catalysts for future things. Sure. Where was your mission trip, Dave? Uh, we went to Cairo, Illinois was one of them, and St. Paul, Minnesota was the other one we did this past summer. And what uh, what did you do on the mission trip? Uh, we did everything from serving meals to people to helping uh, clean up their backyards to physical work to working in uh, some of the soup kitchens to uh, helping uh, with like a boys and girls club uh, with the sp- social activities as well as the sporting activities. And we brought down about 20, about 35 this, this past year, and they truly did. Uh, it was a game changer for many of them. It's wonderful that, um, as Bob said, uh, it does change your life. But I think one of the things, especially if you're a younger person, it empowers you. You you do the things adults tell you to do. But all of a sudden on mission trips, 
You're responsible. You're the one who has to do the setup. So it empowers you to realize, I can come back and do the same thing. I can come back and I I can go to a, um, an inner city parish. I can go to an urban parish. I can go to a rural parish. I could do the same thing, help, helping and, and forming and fashioning, allowing God to use me as an instrument. And I do the same mm-hmm. things at home because my parents tell me to, but then when I go away and I serve others, it, it's not the same thing so that when I do come back, as you say, I feel more uh, initiative and more empowerment to go out into other areas and help. We want to talk about an event that is coming up on January 19th at Our Lady of Lourdes Parish on South 58th Street. It is entitled Gigs, Geeks, and God. And we're going to do that shortly. It's it's an all-day event. They've got a whole bunch of neat things going on, Uh, experts sharing ideas, social media, how to use it at your parish, and also how to create parish apps. We're going to have our two guests talk more about that. Uh, We're sitting here and uh, meeting with Dave Boudry from St. Agnes and Mark Peekner from Our Lady of Lourdes. We're going to get into uh, the news from our friends at Catholic Herald, and we're also going to find out what's going on at our Catholic schools here in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. You're listening to Living Our Faith for Southeast Wisconsin here on Relevant Radio. This is Bob Bennis with exciting news if you have sales experience. We're planning to add to our sales staff here at Relevant Radio. If you have sales experience, preferably in the media, but it's not necessary, but if you're organized, self-motivated, and enjoy working as an important part of a team, this could be the position for you. As a Relevant Radio account executive, you'll help with the marketing and branding of local businesses that support Relevant Radio and share your Catholic values. If working in a fun, fast-paced radio environment for a growing Catholic company sounds like a fit for you, let's talk about it. We'll help you get started, give you the tools to be successful in the marketplace. Why don't you send your resume to hr at relevantradio.com. Now, you're hearing this message on Relevant Radio, so I think I have a pretty good idea of your commitment to your Catholic faith. Let's take that next step now and find out if joining our Relevant Radio team is for you. Again, send your resume to hr at relevantradio.com. Thanks for listening to Relevant Radio. Good morning. I'm Grace David with news from the Archdiocese of Milwaukee Catholic Schools. With Advent Central on their minds, students from St. Charles Parish in Heartland collected non-perishable food items for donation to the St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry. The successful food drive, organized by the Student Council, netted hundreds of items. It was a perfect way for the St. Charles students to celebrate the Christmas season. Each month, St. Bruno Parish School in Dousman focuses on a different saint. During December, St. Bruno students learned about the word hope and how St. Teresa of Calcutta's character traits brought hope to others. The second and third grade classes provided the school with a presentation on St. Teresa of Calcutta and worked together to donate blankets for the homeless through their partnership with St. Ben's. St. Joseph Catholic Academy in Kenosha is proud to be offering J-Term. These unique, hands-on learning sessions provide students with distinctive opportunities that ignite curiosity, creativity, and inspiration. In early January, St. Joseph Catholic Academy's middle and high school students will immerse themselves in diverse courses that explore topics outside of their normal college preparatory curriculum, which reveal talents, gifts, and passions. And now moving on to headlines from the Catholic Herald and catholicherald.org. This week's Catholic Herald offers you 16 pages of last-minute spiritual nourishment and inspiration for Christmas. If you don't have an opportunity to read it in print, visit catholicherald.org for a wealth of Catholic news and information. One of our inspirational stories centers upon an Our Lady of Guadalupe procession that took place on a snowy December night. It was an inspirational night in that it not only honored Our Lady, but it celebrated the 90th anniversary of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the Spanish-speaking mission on Milwaukee's south side. You'll find the pictures and the story in this week's Catholic Herald and at catholicherald.org. Can the Santa Claus Ruse be a ministry? It is when done by Bob and Gloria Jean Howe, members of Good Shepherd Parish, Menominee Falls, who take on the personas of Mr. and Mrs. Claus every year to bring seasonal joy to children. Read their story in this week's Catholic Herald and at catholicherald.org. When it comes to Christmas, there is nothing that defines it and celebrates it better than Midnight Mass. 
That's why Archbishop Lestecki will be celebrating Midnight Mass on Christmas Eve at the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist. The prelude, featuring the Cathedral Choir, begins at 11.15, and for the fourth consecutive year, the Mass will air on WISN-TV, Channel 12, in Milwaukee. Finally, we at the Catholic Herald hope your Christmas season is filled with the joy and blessings the Christ Child brought into our world more than 2,000 years ago. This is Grace David. Merry Christmas. We now return you to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Lestecki. Welcome back to Living Our Faith. Our guests are Dave Boudry and Mark Peekner, and we're talking about gigs, geek, and God, and we're going to zero in now on an event that's coming up on January 19th, and this is not a first-time event here in the Archdiocese. This has been going on for several years. And, Mark, why don't you tell us a little bit about the event and the impetus for how it got started and I believe it was back seven years ago? Well, this will be our seventh conference that okay. we put together. And our group actually started a little bit before that. And mm-hmm. Dave is probably the, a better person to kind of talk about how it, uh, how orig- how it originated because it was he and uh, Gary Picorni who, who kind of got everything started and then called a, a number of us together for a, an informal meeting to just kind of kick around the idea. But with this particular conference, we're, we're building on uh, what has been a, a growing success rate for ourselves. Uh, I would think our, I, probably our first one we had like maybe 50 people. 50 or 60, yeah. And now we're, you know, we're, we've had consistently over the last couple of years 100, 120 people come. A uh, number of people are starting to say, hey, why don't you start offering this out to other dioceses within the state? Because there's just nothing else out there that they're seeing that allows people to come in and just get some, you know, really solid workshops on using technology within ministry in, in different aspects, whether it's collaborative work with, you know, between parish staff or how to, you know, how to build a parish app or how to make a, you know, how to design your website better. It really has been a, a really fun growing program. Not only that, Mark, but I think it's growing in uh, our numbers. And when we first started out, it was more of a category. Uh, and getting uh, Christian formation, DREs, uh, youth ministers there. And now we have a pretty full range of pastoral councils that come in, secretaries, um, along with people that are directly in the ministry in many, many fields that are, are involved in it. Dave, do I have to be a geek in order to come to uh, the, the workshop? What level of expertise do I have to have when it comes to technology? Can I be technologically challenged, and would the workshop help me? I think the workshops would definitely help you. We have different levels of workshops, which make a difference. And when you use the word geek, and there's different types. And I guess for me right now, it's somebody that really wants to learn technology and be a part of technology. As I look at my uh, career in technology, I started out uh, several years from my uh, master's program doing a uh, creating a website and using youth ministry. But what I ended up doing is having the young people in middle school help create the website on the different components of ministry. And that was very effective because they were a part of it. And it also helped me because many of those uh, young people, and I had the high school as well, they've been using technology in, in uh, middle school and high school, especially Marquette University. And he really was the one that created the website. Give me an example of, uh, of, of how creatively technology is being used at a parish level or um, a youth level uh, today what and what type of technology are they using one thing that we are really trying to get our staff to use more right now is an application within Microsoft Office called OneNote and it allows us to really work collaborative collaboratively with each other with a shared source and uh, what we're able to do for something say like uh, funerals are concerned uh, to be able to have an intake form there to have the past Pastor's notes uh, for his for his homily to have all the information that goes into the liturgy as uh, so like all the readings and everything else. Also, a picture that we would use for our remembrance service on November second that we do every year, and then all and all the songs that they pick for the funeral, everything so that you know not only is it convenient for us to be able to have that all in one place to be able to uh, make sure that we're all on the same page, but let's say that a family member comes uh, a couple years later and you know they just want to try to remember everything that happened at their that their loved one's funeral well we're able to pull that up very very quickly and be able to provide that information for them if they were wondering what song was you know what was that one song that was played at uh, at my father's funeral you know those kinds of things so we also do that with our with our face formation program um, so those are the kind you know that's one thing that you know can kind of creatively come out of it we also look at you know teaching 
people or teaching parishes how to improve their websites so that um, they really speak to, you know, especially uh, people who are searching for a parish. That's really their front door Mm -hmm. nowadays. So is your front door appealing or is your front door messy? It, it can really, you know, make a difference of whether or not people will continue to journey in search about your parish and then eventually walk into the door. I know that it's definitely something that has happened to the, the parish that I work at. People have, you know, looked at our website and told us, yeah, it was your website that decided that led us to at least come in and, and check you out because it had some things that we were looking for. So it, it, it was able to feed them that information. I'm seeing more and more people experiment with Facebook Live because Facebook Live now has exploded onto the scene. And, and Dave, when you look at when you look at what you're doing with uh, with G3, how is Facebook Live? How can that enter into this whole uh, equation when, when you talk about what parishioners during events uh, are able to do? Bob, it's another avenue that we have with uh, technology that is communication. And there's many people that are out there right now that that are on Facebook and avid followers. And one of the things that uh, that's appealing is looking at the different workshops we have that we'll be putting out there and being able to choose exactly. The things that you're interested in. Now, not everybody's gifted uh, in technology, and so there's several over 30 workshops at three different times that we have. We go in sessions that you can pick the workshops that you want. But just an example of Facebook, it's kind of like uh, what you see is what you get, and it's relevant time. And for example, our mission trips that we had, it was exciting to hear all the different posts and see all the different posts that people had to the different events that parishes are having coming up, uh, going through. I know with RCA, I use it a lot. With I do a lot of slideshows okay and i also do slideshows with the mission trips and with first communion and different things and people like to see pictures and they also like to see a community coming together and sharing and at saint agnes we have a, a school slash church website that we use and it's wonderful we just had a sam's walk run not too long ago and it was powerful to see all the people uh that were interested in that that join um after seeing some of the pictures that we had or the technology that's out there to make people truly aware of what's happening either in the church or the community. Name some of those workshops so that my listeners would get a, um, a sense of, of what they might be signing up for. Well, one of the things that we have is Quick Fire, and it's an easy five-minute uh, workshop, and it, it's, it goes for 15 minutes that you go to the workshop that you express interest in, and there's uh, 10 workshops in that round, and there's several different things to, to choose from. One of them, as Mark mentioned, OneNote in ministry, planning. Uh, there's blended classrooms, okay, looking at flipped classrooms for uh, uh, religious education. Um, there's also different phone apps that you can talk about. We have our keynote, John Roberto, who's uh, the master of youth ministry, who's going to be sharing along with different uh, workshops that we have with di- digital images for printing on web, uh, strategies for parenting in the digital generation. There's social media, uh, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, along with several other ones that we have. And I think when you when you're listening to this show today, and at first you were thinking, well, wait, this doesn't apply to me because I'm not really into the technology. I don't understand the technology. But the reality is that this is more for you than it is for people who are deep into technology, because oftentimes it's you who are at parish level who are thinking to yourself, how can we get our Facebook page to be more active or interactive? How can we get our website to jump more and get more people to come and visit the website? Mm -hmm. So really, this event is for you out in our listening audience who uh, who who do more than just sit in the pew on Sunday at Mass. Any closing thoughts here before before we wrap up? We definitely um, also touch on ethics as well. Good. Like good, good, you know, like ethical use. So, you know, when you bring up Facebook Live, it, it comes with its own obstacles, you know, especially if, you know, you, you want to broadcast something within a parish live. What can and can't you do? Because um, it's live. Because it's live. <laughs> also, you know, with using images. Sure. You know, a lot of people, you know, they'll go to, to Google and they'll click on the images link and they think that it's free. Mm-hmm. And it's not. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there that's copyright protected and you we cannot use within the things that we do. So we even touch on that kind of stuff as well. But when it comes to who is this for, I like to say all digital immigrants welcome, regardless if, we, you, regardless if you can speak the language or not. Very good. The other thing I was going to mention is it's also a wonderful networking time that you can come together with your friends or people that you know from the workshops and, and talk to them and say, how did you do that? Or what's going on in your parish? Or how can we do this or that? You come away with a lot of skills, uh, which is also very helpful, um, along with questions that you might have. 
Dave so, Boudry from St. Agnes and Mark Peekner from Our Lady of Lords. We wish you all the best of success out at the event, which will take place at Our Lady of Lords Parish on South 58th Street on January 19th. And to register and get more information, go to archmill.org slash G3. We're going to take our final break. You're listening to Living Our Faith here on Relevant Radio. This is Bob Bennis with exciting news if you have sales experience. We're planning to add to our sales staff here at Relevant Radio. If you have sales experience, preferably in the media, but it's not necessary, but if you're organized, self-motivated, and enjoy working as an important part of a team, this could be the position for you. As a Relevant Radio account executive, you'll help with the marketing and branding of local businesses that support Relevant Radio and share your Catholic values. If working in a fun, fast-paced radio environment for a growing Catholic company sounds like a fit for you, let's talk about it. We'll help you get started, give you the tools to be successful in the marketplace. Why don't you send your resume to hr at relevantradio.com. Now, you're hearing this message on Relevant Radio, so I think I have a pretty good idea of your commitment to your Catholic faith. Let's take that next step now and find out if joining our Relevant Radio team is for you. Again, send your resume to hr at relevantradio.com. Thanks for listening to Relevant Radio. The name of the event is Gigs, Geeks, and God on January 19th. And to register and get more information, go to archmill.org slash g3. We always close the show in prayer, and let us do that now, Your Excellency. Sure, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty and, and ever-living God, God we, we praise, praise you and we bless you, you for you, you are, are great indeed. indeed. Grant, we, we pray, as on that first Pentecost, that tongues of fire may descend upon us, and that the driving wind of your Holy Spirit may blow boldly into our hearts. Loving God, we ask you, Make us effective and holy witnesses of the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Increase our faith through the sacramental life of the Church. Grant us courage to follow you as faithful disciples. Embolden us, O God, so that we may go forth to proclaim your gospel and renew the face of the earth. In this Archdiocese of Milwaukee, we humbly pray for strength and fortitude to follow your great commission to go and make disciples of all people, living our faith through word and deed, through the intercession of St. John the Evangelist, patron of the Archdiocese, and Mary, the mother of the Church. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas, Archbishop. Hey, thank you, Bob. Merry Christmas to all our listeners. And let us all be transformed by the Spirit. This has been Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki and co-host Bob Bennis. Join us again next week for the latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Diocese of Milwaukee. Diocese of Milwaukee. Seas of Milwaukee.